All right, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, my name is Ted Spears. I work at Microchip Technology in the FPJ Business Unit. Uh, as I think it was pointed out earlier by Callista, we're a sponsor of, of the RISC-5 uh, Summit, and your Wi-Fi password, I think, is pound microchip FPGA. Uh, I'm also on the board of directors of RISC-5 International and have been, been so since its inception back when it was RISC-5 Foundation in, in 2016. So, uh, you know, first, you know, I, I'm really happy to participate in uh, the RISC-5 uh, 101 uh, session today. And uh, you know, my, my portion is, is going to be talking about uh, the RISC-5 ecosystem. Yeah, so the, there's the context and the whole, whole, whole section. So there's a lot of overlap, actually, and messages will be, be the same. Uh, so we should come away today, hopefully, uh, understanding, have a feeling that the RISC-V ecosystem is ready, but also, more importantly, where do I go uh, when I want to find out or, or get something done with RISC-V? And that's mainly what I'm going to be uh, doing. Uh, you know, te teaching uh, people how to fish, so to speak, in, in the RISC-V uh, ecosystem. So, uh, some important context. Uh, uh, so, what, what you see here uh, is, is there's a software ecosystem uh, at the top, and then an implementation. That's the actual hardware that you that you get. It's, it's an, a chip that someone makes. So you have software. And, and, and you want to run it on a piece of uh, silicon. And the ISA, which is what RISC-V is, is, is the instruction set architecture. And it's really the contract or the interface between the hardware and software. It's, it's a, uh, an important uh, distinction. And it really defines what RISC-V International is about. We're, we're, we're defining uh, that ISA level so that people can make silicon and the software that's out there can, can run on that silicon because of the instruction set architecture is defined. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to break up or, or, or slice, uh, slice this, but, but one of the ways is open closed. And, and uh, this is an area that's actually uh, a lot of confusion uh, 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 about the about risk five you know is, is it open source is it closed source what is it so to kind of step through here uh, we'll see a lot of these type of slides the history of compute uh, this this is one one version of the history of compute uh, kind of we, we started out in the, in the PC era anyways uh, you know there's one operating system it was DOS or, or, or Windows that was closed the proprietary operating system and you know, a whole bunch of software ecosystem, of course, around Windows, but Windows was kind of the, the centerpiece. And there was kind of one instruction set architecture. It was the x86. And uh, there's actually two people uh, who could build x86s. It was uh, Intel, and they, and, they, and they licensed AMD. So you had a, a proprietary ISA, proprietary software. And these guys also controlled who could make the hardware. So, for, for the longest time, the first you know uh, era of, of the PC, uh, basically the whole ecosystem uh, was closed. It was an excellent ecosystem uh, for sure. Uh, one of the things that, that you know people had control, so they had complete control, and uh, they were able to charge a lot of money in the beginning of an industry, and so they were able to build out this ecosystem. But eventually. Uh, uh, people started focusing on open source. And the open source revolution, uh, you could probably pin down the day. Certainly GCC, uh, Richard Stallman you know, invented a compiler that anyone could, could, could use that would compile uh, you know, uh, uh, C and Fortran and other things to the, uh, 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 the Intel x86 architecture that was out there. And then in, I think, 1993, is when uh, 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 Linux, uh, you know, there was an email sent out uh, and said, you know, here I have this operating system, check it out. And it, it, that was Linux. I believe that was 1993. So there's, so now the, the world started to uh, cleave into kind of an open and closed world. And then around the same time, maybe before in the late, late 80s, uh, 
a new instruction set architecture based on something called RISC came out. And there's a lot of RISC architectures, but ARM here serving as a dominant one. So they came out with a new ISA to compete with uh, uh, x86 eventually. It started out at, at, at a lower point than x86, but uh, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a comp competitor. But what ARM really brought to the market was they, they didn't say, here, buy our chips. They said, you know, buy our IP, and then lots of people could make chips uh, 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 with the ARM. So, so now other people could get into the, the business of making chips. Uh, you know, you listed a few examples here. You know, they obviously dominate the cell phone market. So Samsung makes uh, ARM-based chips, Qualcomm, Marvell, Apple. Uh, uh, so ARM really, by this, this idea of uh, uh, taking their IP and selling it to other people, allow other people to make uh, products with the ARM ISA was really changed, revolutionized uh, uh, the industry. But that was all still closed, basically. So RISC V comes along. Uh, it's not the first open ISA, but it's, it's going to be the most important one. And we said, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make an ISA, but anyone could change the ISA, edit it, customize it. Uh, use it for their own purposes. Uh, so we had an open instruction set, uh, and what that's really uh, uh, implemented or enabled is instead of one provider for your uh, uh, RISC-V ISA uh, IP, like in the case of ARM, there's going to be a whole ecosystem or universe of uh, RISC-V uh, IP suppliers and uh, you know they they'll, they'll implement RISC V. So the ISA is fixed; it's it's open. But the suppliers, any supplier, can make a RISC V IP targeted for a new market, something that's coming up quickly, a certain customer's needs. Uh, uh, so this this is how uh, uh, you know RISC V kind of is changing the landscape of, of of compute. So here I showed you know four examples. Uh, we had uh, talks already today from Codasip and Sci Five. Uh, NVIDIA I list, there's, they're not an IP company, they actually, but they use RISC-V and, and adopt it in their own chip. So, so the history of RISC-V, you know, the early adopters are people who made their own, didn't tell anyone about it, and just embedded it in their chip. So if you buy an NVIDIA GPU today, that's on the second or third generation, there'll be, uh, you know, tens to dozens of RISC-Vs inside that. But these, uh, uh, they kind of can't quite see the line there, but, but these are not open source uh, IP. These are actually proprietary IPs. So this is kind of a, a, a distinction that, that the industry needs. The ISA is open. It can run both closed source software and open source software. Uh, but you know, a lot of different people can implement uh, proprietary versions of their IP, and then they're going to go sell it to you and license it. But that's not the end of the story. There is open source IP, so if you don't want to pay one of these vendors for, for the IP, <coughs> excuse me, you can go out and, and actually go uh, to get a open source uh, version of the IP. So I, I listed here two examples. One is something called the Open Hardware Group. Uh, they have a whole bunch of open source RISC-V IPs. Uh, early uh, adopter of RISC-V is a company called uh, Low Risk. Uh, you know, another example, but there's lots of, if you go to the, go to the web, you can find lots of examples of open source IPs. And these aren't just toys. They're actually implemented uh, in, in designs that people can buy today. So now we get to the implementation SOC. In, in a sense, this is no different than uh, what, you know, what ARM enabled. Lots of people implementing uh, 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 RISC-V today. So you know, NVIDIA, as I mentioned already, people use ARM before or switching to uh, uh, Risk five because they see the benefits, and then Microchip, my company, uh, an early adopter of Risk five, and you know, kind of the reasons were, you know, we did want to innovate. We didn't like, uh, you know, you go to ARM. And I was like, so if you go to an optometrist, they say, does this look better? Does this look better? Uh, you know, ARM is like this. Like, you want this core or you want this core? Well, now with Risk five, you can, you know, basically, you can get whatever you want. You can make your own. You can go to one vendor and say, "I don't. How about this?" And well, we don't have that. Do you go to another vendor, and and, and they'll, they'll they'll deliver that to you. So uh, you know, this is a key enabler of, of RISC-V. So a lot of proprietary implementations of RISC-V, 
And then there's actually a whole open source project built on RISC-V on, on the low, uh, low risk RISC-V. It's called Open Titan. It's a uh, root of trust uh, program uh, run by Google. Uh, so, so Google uses Open Titan for their root of trust and in their data centers, but anyone can go uh, uh, use this silicon implementation of, of, a, of root of trust. Uh, so it's a complete open source ecosystem. So that's kind of the context here. But, you know, like I, I kind of, you know, emphasized, you know, where the magic happens, what's really different is, is we have the open ISA and then lots of implementations of, of the ISA uh, that, are, that are out there. Uh, and then everything else kind of fills in around it. It's not differentiated. It's just a matter of, you know, is it there? Uh, you know, uh, is it there yet? And, you know, the answer is, is yes, and hopefully um, uh, you'll, you'll understand that by the end of the talk. So, uh, you know, points of entry. You know, I'm, I'm a, a user. I want to learn about RISC-V. I want to uh, build some hardware with RISC-V. I want to buy some RISC-V hardware. Uh, I, I want to participate in RISC-V. You, know, so, you know, where do I go uh, learn how this? You, you could go look at my pitch, but you know, a better, better thing is just you know, start at, at these obvious points of entry. And one is you know, RISC-V International has a website, RISC-V.org, and uh, uh, they, they have one kind of key point of entry. It's called the, the, the landscape, and so you go to this website uh, on RISC-V, and there you see Basically, this is you know every company has a slide like this, an ecosystem slide that shows all the partners, you know the whole layer, the whole stack, uh, and so here it shows you know from application software to operating systems, and then what's different it goes to all these different implementations. That's that's different that bottom row, so you see all those different suppliers. So you can go to I mentioned Andes, we talked about Codasip, but you see Cordis, uh, Imagination. There's 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 literally uh, dozens of of uh, the people making implementations of, of risk five so this uh, you know th uh, this 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 slide is taken from that that website you know risk five landscape and you know and of course each of these if you go here and and say here's where do I want to start here you know, there's a link uh, uh, each of these is are uh, hyperlinked to you know where you need to go to learn more so that's a good resource uh, if you want to uh, you know, say jump into the uh, risk 5 pool and uh, you know, as you can see uh, uh, you know it's very very robust and com complete ecosystem of open source and uh, uh, closed source here so you see Android big announcements about Android Android su fully supports risk 5 you see free BSD you know, it's one of the early uh, 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 Unix uh, releases of software. That's open source uh, uh, Unix. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, I think uh, Green Hills and, and Wind River. These are proprietary software. They all support RISC-V. So the RISC-V ecosystem is there, and this is kind of one entry point that you can, that you can go to. And you can also go to uh, uh, RISC-V.org.exchange, uh, and this is a good spot here. Kind, kind of can you know, maybe need to blow blow this up, but you can, you know, this is basically a whole directory of the RISC V ecosystem, and you can sort or or search for hardware, RISC V cores, RISC V software, RISC V solution providers, uh, and RISC V, uh, you know, learn RISC V, RISC V educators. So here, we're clicking on learn, and you you see it's all you know alphabetical. We have an Arabic course in computer architect architecture, RISC V uh, tutorials. Uh, uh, on RISC V MCU, so this whole thing uh, is available. If you want to learn about RISC V, you can go, and then of course there's the, the selections on the on, on the uh, left hand side to, to kind of further refine your uh, where you want to uh, go and learn about RISC V. So I'll just stop here or make a key point uh, as far as learning, you know. RISC-V, I, I like to say, is the lingua franca of computer research. So all universities are switching to RISC-V. Students, if you're going to be hiring students, you need them to understand hardware, they're going to be trained in RISC-V. So, so uh, you know, this, this is one thing that RISC-V enables. University doesn't want to just use a fixed implementation of the core. They want to be able to experiment with it, change with it. This is why uh, RISC-V uh, is really important in the... Uh, you know, education, which is then going to be the, the, the future of compute. It's all going to be 
And all the students are going to be RIS V trained. So uh, other points of entry are uh, these RIS V adjacent organizations. So I mentioned one, Open Hardware Group. So this is not RIS V International, but it's a group that says, OK, RIS V looks great. And uh, uh, let, let's help people build RISC V chips uh, using uh, uh, these open source uh, IPs. So there's you know, a number of companies are involved in, and, and you know, you know, mainstream companies are part of this group, which are basically, uh, you know, if you don't have your own silicon department, you can go to them, and, and they can help you start getting, uh, you know, with the tools you need and, and, and the contacts and so forth that build a full. RISC V based system on chip. Uh, there's another one. Uh, there's going to actually be a whole talk today about RISE. Uh, uh, it's the RISC V software ecosystem. It's a Linux project. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, 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 you know, if we go back to that, that first slide, they're basically going to be stewarding and making sure that open source software ecosystem is completely robust and built up. And they're going to be, you know, making sure that that, uh, uh, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's of the RISC-V uh, uh, open source software ecosystems. So there's a whole talk today, uh, a little bit later, about uh, uh, what, what RISE is doing for the, for the RISC-V ecosystem. But again, they have a, a website if you want to go uh, learn about, uh, you know, where RISC-V open source software is going to happen. So then, uh, uh, you know, the next thing is, well, uh, uh, you know, go to vendor sites. So the how, you know, every one of those links I have, you go to those vendors, and that may be a good way to get started in, in learning about what, what's available in RISC V. So, you know, could you then, uh, you know, show some examples, you know, Green Hill software. Uh, uh, you know, so, so if you're in a certain industry, like automotive or uh, defense, uh, uh, industrial safety, uh, you know, chances are, your whole organization is going to be, uh, you know, the Green Hills is actually the center point of, of uh, uh, developing products for your industry. Uh, you know, there's many examples like this, but, you know, Green Hills is one. So if you go to the Green Hills website, uh, you click on products, and they have a, you know, core supported, and this is the RISC V page. So, you know, their whole product line is, is, is uh, going to be supported uh, by RISC V. So, so, if, so if, if you're in a company, and, and you have some uh, operating system or development environment that uh, uh, your company uses, you don't have to worry, chances are you don't have to worry about is RISC-V supported. You know, it's going to be uh, uh, fully supported. So uh, another point of entry, you know, the core providers. You know, I said uh, uh, core providers, this, this is really what differentiates RISC-V. There's going to be lots of different core providers. Uh, Sci-5 is one, uh, uh, Codasip, but, you know, I just showed some examples. Uh, you know, Andy's uh, early adopter of RISC-V. So, uh, you know, they built out a, uh, uh, you know, their ecosystem on, you know, so, so the vendors have their own uh, uh, ecosystem. So you go there and, and start to learn about how that vendor uh, is, is your actual point of entry uh, into, the, uh, into the ecosystem. So you see Green Hills, IAR. Uh, and Paris, uh, uh, these are all part of the Andes ecosystem. And so then Andes is saying, I'm gonna, I want to sell uh, RISC-V, but you know, I want to sell it to different marketplaces. So these companies, these, these software companies, or these, these IP companies w w are building out uh, uh, you know, one-stop shops for all, everything you need to, to, to develop a RISC-V product for different vertical markets. So here I'm just showing uh, the uh, automotive example from uh, from from Andes, and then uh, then you know you know you know at the at the kind of the bottom last but not least it's the actual silicon providers, and so now we're going to switch to a, a commercial for for microchips. So you know, I got this T-shirt here, My Five. Yeah, that's our uh, ecosystem. So to support our Risk Five based silicon. Uh, and so if you go there, you, you, you'll hit there, you hit the My5 ecosystem, and like, like, like Andy's, we have CPUs, design tools, operating systems, solutions. And you know, one thing about these, ec ecosystem is actually alive. So uh, things can happen really quickly. If, if you go to one of these suppliers and say, I need this, and if it's not there, actually it doesn't take that long for uh, 
uh, the ecosystem to move and, and kind of you know, attack a certain problem. So the ecosystem is very dynamic. So if you're sitting out here and, and, and you go through and say, well, I didn't see this, it's not that hard to, to actually make, make, make that uh, magically appear. Uh, uh, we'll kind of touch on an example a little bit later. So, you know, our ecosystem is built on a, 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 some, a chip we make called Polar Fire SOC. So it's got a five core uh, a RISC-V uh, application processor in it embedded with an FPGA. So this is not a soft core that you program into an FPGA. It's actually a RISC-V uh, 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 application processor, four, four core running Linux, and then a, a, a fifth core to handle security and system management. Uh, so you know, plus uh, FPGA gates you need to attach or uh, accelerators to, to, uh, to your RISC-V. So, so now things start to get fractal. Uh, uh, so we have a board. Uh, we have a chip, actually, but now we're creating our own ecosystem. So there's lots of places you can go to buy uh, RISC-V silicon using our silicon. And so you know, this is our partner. So you can go to a company called Aries Embedded or Trends, uh, people making uh, uh, SOMs you know, so that help you get, get to market and small form factors uh, quickly with RISC-V. Yeah, so you know, depending on your application domain, these these customers or these uh, uh, yeah, partners, you know, support support have expertise in different domains. But uh, so it's not just you don't have to just go to microchip to get hardware. You can go to any of these suppliers, and I'll just focus on one. There's the Beagle Five. So so now it starts to get fractal. Uh, so we have some hardware, lots of people making hardware, but uh, you know, Beagle's expertise is to build ecosystems. So now you have an ecosystem that's created an ecosystem. Uh, and so, so, so Beagles just did their announcement. Uh, and they're, they're actually displaying, uh, I thought I had it in here, somewhere in here. You know, they, they, you know this, is their, this is the Beagle Fire Board. It's built with, it's, you know, the, if people are familiar with Beagle Board, uh, uh, they used to build uh, you know, ARM-based chips. They still do build ARM-based boards. Uh, started with TI, but now they're branching out into RISC-V, and we're really proud that they've chosen PolarFire is, is going to be, they're not going to just be a microchip uh, RISC-V outlet, they're going to be a RISC-V outlet for you know, any silicon that comes out. You can imagine open source uh, uh, hardware, so, so you can get the schematics, you can build whatever, you know, uh, you know they tell, tell you how to build this board if you want to build this board, but then you know, they have whole software ecosystem supported, and, and if, you, if you're involved or plugged into something like BeagleBoard, you, you've had this whole ecosystem kind of uh, served on an open platter for you to you know, uh, uh, get involved with the RISC V. So we're really happy with this. The BeagleBoard announcement was recently, and they're going to be uh, uh, presenting here. So, you know, back to the slide, you know, where the magic happens. Uh, uh, this having all these vendors lets you know, RISC-V, it's going to let RISC-V attack, you know, any domain uh, real quickly and, and rapidly. So there's like legacy domains. So, you know, telecom, IOT, AIML, that's kind of a new domain. So if you're a startup company, uh, you know, the quote I had is, you know, I asked a, guy, a VP of a startup, uh, did, did the uh, VC have a problem with you choosing risk five over arm and he said it would have been the other way around if you if, if you went with them with arm they would have said why not risk five so 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 anyone building new uh, you know entering new markets it's the obvious answer to go uh, uh, use risk five so AI ml obviously uh, rapidly growing automotive uh, important area in the future data center and cloud so risk five is not all about small embedded processors. It's about data center and cloud and, and high performance computing. So, so the, this all happened very quickly, uh, like I said, for the legacy, but the future, you know, that's, that's where the future is gonna be uh, with RISC-V because you've got all that uh, 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 engine for innovation, I think, because anyone could build their own uh, RISC-V uh, devices. So, you know, just kind of closing, you know, can this ecosystem be, uh, this, this slide is something uh, kind of illustrates the point. Can the ecosystem be used in, angry, is, in, in anger? So this is a company called Skycorp. Uh, you know, we talked about legacy markets. There's going to be a huge economy on the moon, uh, ultimately. 
of people are all figuring out how to plan and put stuff on the moon. So Skycorp said, we're, we're building something completely new. We want to use RISC-V. They kind of did the same thing. Oh, who makes RISC-V chips, uh, a microchip? Uh, uh, so they, they called us, and yeah, and they got excited that what, what we had with Polar Fire SOC. And they said, well, you know, we want to build data centers on the moon. So for data centers, we, we're going to need an operating system. So what's the, what's the number one operating system for Linux? Ubuntu. So they actually you know, made the phone call to Ubuntu, and Ubuntu uh, uh, came and said, oh, yeah, we can support that. So I told you that the ecosystem is a dynamic. This illustrates that, that the ecosystem is dynamic. So you know, this is actually fielded, you know, a product, a full-blown product, not developed by microchip, using microchip silicon, you know, using Ubuntu Linux is up on the space station today as a test platform for new hardware uh, uh, that's going to ultimately uh, take RISC-V to the moon. And if you followed the news on uh, uh, microchip, and you know, it's going to it's going to take RISC-V to Saturn, Jupiter, uh, you know, planets, exoplanets, and RISC-V is definitely going to own that uh, that market. So kind of concluding, you know, hopefully, you know, RISC-V is ready, you know, so you saw the kind of the breadth, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the, the, the charts showing all, you know, all the different uh, components are, are there. Uh, it's accessible, so kind of a lot of the talk was showing you how to, uh, uh, you, know, you know, get what you need uh, to help the ecosystem work for you. And then finally, it is uh, enabling uh, innovation. So that's, that's my talk. Thank you.